When he, when he asked me to give this one of the final speeches today, one I'd already said I'd love to come up anyway because it's such a great idea for an event. Um, but he said you've got to give a really inspiring speech at the end of the day. You've got to leave. You know, everyone when everyone leaves, they've, they've got to be thinking about the future and just wanting to talk about computing and spreading the word. So thanks. This is a tough thing to do, but no, I, I really want you guys. I've been listening to you and walking around all day and just li looking in on sessions and just hearing and seeing what people have been doing today and it's been an absolute delight i'm not going to start crying or anything but it's actually genuinely inspiring to see you guys talking about some really technical things doing some really technical things and creating and innovating with stuff so it actually has been inspiring for me and i know for a lot of other people so it has been a brilliant day so far. But let's just kind of talk about a few things. I've got a little bit of time. Um, so yeah, my name's Tom Crick. I'm a senior lecturer in computer science. So hopefully, if you guys go and study computer science at university, I could be one of your lecturers. Um, brilliant. Let's not talk about any copyright issues with the logo. But, that's impressive. Um, but I have a confession. I want to confess in front of you guys. Hopefully you won't tell me one. Obviously this is being streamed as well, so hopefully they won't tell me one. My name's Tom and I'm a computer scientist. That's my deep, dark confession. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to, to manage to say that out loud. And I'm not afraid to say that I'm a computer scientist. And sometimes that has some negative connotations. You know, it's not always cool to be, I'm, I'm a scientist or I'm a mathematician or whatever. But I am a computer scientist. I teach computer science. I did a computer science degree. I did a, a PhD in computer science. And I do research in computer science. And I teach undergraduates and postgraduates. Um, but that doesn't make me a geek. Okay? This is the thing, and this is the problem. Um, to, uh, to be fair, it's actually reasonably cool to be a geek now for certain people. That's quite cool. We saw a picture of Mark Zuckerberg earlier. He's a geek, but I wouldn't mind being a geek if I was worth $50 billion. 
it's not a bad thing. So, this is kind of a stereotypical image of, uh, of people who do computer science or, you know, the perception. I don't know, that's quite a nice shirt. I think, I think Alan's wearing a similar shirt to that today, so it's not too bad. But, this puts people off. This puts you guys off in doing or studying computer science because of this, this poor perception. But you shouldn't be afraid to show and do the things you actually really enjoy doing. Because technology is everywhere, computing is everywhere, and we should be happy embracing it and using it and doing interesting things with it. Okay? And that's what you guys have been doing today. So we have seen some amazing applications of, of little bits of technology and you know, doing interesting things and solving real-world problems and creating stuff and programming. That's pretty cool. It's actually fun. And you shouldn't be worried about saying that. Okay, this is a grand saying. Look, I've even got a laser pointer. That's how much of a lecturer I am. I've, I've got a green laser. Green because supposedly is even better than a red laser. Okay, that's you guys again, the, the best of the best. So this grand statement, computing, the science of nearly everything. What do you think? Do you think that's, a, that's an outrageous statement? What is computing's contribution to our everyday lives? Let's have some hands. That's, what do you think is computing important to us? It wakes you up. Yeah, maybe it does. Maybe on your iPhone, you set your alarm, that's fine. What, what else? How's it, how's it going to do? Yeah, so who uses the internet? There we go, that's pretty, pretty uh, reliant on computing and computers. Anything else? That's a massive one. Talking to each other. How, how much has computing changed the way that human beings interact? Massively. We already asked earlier, who, who uses Facebook? Who uses Twitter? Who uses um, any other social networking site? Do you talk to your friends on Facebook and Twitter? Exactly so. Technology and computing has changed the way that we actually interact as human beings. That's massive. That has changed. So 10 years ago, that, we didn't do that sort of stuff. Even five years ago, it was very different. So it's changed the way that human beings interact. So we can say computing underpins everything. It's not me as a computer scientist saying I'm really important. And, but it does. Ch it has changed everything. Technology has had a massive impact on the way that we do everything. So. Let's think about our normal interaction with electronics or with the wider world. Who, who was in a car today? Well, modern cars do not work without many, many microprocessors controlling how the car works. A fridge, um, there's probably hundreds of microprocessors in this room. So, I mean, actually, most people have a computer in their pocket, so that's, there, there are literally hundreds in here. And even there's all little embedded devices. There'll be one in the projector. Um, there's all the cameras and stuff here. There's the mixing desk. There's loads of stuff in there. Microprocessor everywhere. So that has changed the way that we do stuff. And we are so reliant on, this, on the, these technologies that we need to know how to, how to use them effectively. So the things you guys have been doing today, so you know, learning how to program, um, playing with gadgets, and making devices do things, you're in control of that. You know, Samantha said this really importantly, said this key point earlier. Computers are done. They are done. You guys are the clever ones. You are telling it what to do. You're the creative uh, entity that's changing your environment. So this is the point. But education, you guys are all at school. I'm in education still. In fact, I haven't left education. I've been at university. A, I've been at a university for about 12 years. Um, but this, this is a, an interesting statement. Education should prepare young people for a world that doesn't yet exist, requiring technologies that have not yet been invented to solve problems of which we are not yet aware. Well, that pretty much describes computing. You guys are learning the skills that you will be solving problems in the future. And that doesn't make any difference of what job you do. 
Because increasingly, everything you do in the future will require technology, and you'll be using technology to solve problems. So the skills you're learning, or hopefully will be learning more of in the future, you'll be solving the, the, the problems of tomorrow using technologies that we don't know yet, that, that haven't yet been invented. So hopefully you guys will invent those technologies to solve the problems of the future. That's the big challenge, and that's what computing will hopefully do for you guys. Oh, I'm getting emotional. I, I think I might cry at the end of this. I don't know. I can't guarantee anything. But we have this big terminology problem, so we've got things like computing, computer science, computers, ICT, IT, information systems. There's been a lot of upheaval of the past, over the past few months. Some of you, your parents in the audience may have heard stuff in the news. It's been a bit of a game changer. So hopefully, over the next year or so, we will be doing a lot more computer science or interesting things in school because it's really important for you guys to be really engaged and enthused about the stuff you do at school. You need to do interesting things and solve interesting problems and that's what we're aiming to do over the next year or so. But, always throwing a little quote there, this guy, his name's uh, Esger Dijkstra, he's a, to me or to some people in this room, he's a famous computer scientist um, and he objected to the term computer science because he said uh, it's, we're too focused on, on computers. And he said, computer science is no more about computers than astronomy is about telescopes. So astronomy is not called telescope science. Computer science isn't just about computers. And I think you have actually seen that today when we've looked at things like the transitive dice, we looked at the cryptography stuff. It's not just about computers. And the skill that you're developing, these thinking skills, these problem-solving skills, the computational thinking skills, these are the key things. Because it's your brain that's the important thing here, to tell that dumb computer what it's going to do to solve problems. So it's not just about computers. Obviously, it's a big part. Computers are a tool, and they are very fun, and we can do some really interesting things, but it's not just about the computer. But like we said earlier, these... Some of these companies are the random companies I picked off the internet and found some logos for. Some of them probably aren't as popular as they used to be. Um, obviously, MySpace isn't on there. Um, they, these have changed the way that human beings interact. And their impact on society has been massive. Google, for example. Who's heard of Google? <laughs> exactly. When your company name enters the language as a verb, like, I'm going to Google that, that's quite a big deal. You, know, you don't have to worry too much about marketing and branding if, it's in, if it enters the language. Because it's so important to what we do. We're so reliant on things like Google search and other Google searches because it's, it makes our life so much easier. Um, eBay and Amazon, well, that's changed the way that people buy things. Who's, who's, who's purchased something on eBay or Amazon over the past whatever? I buy way too many things on eBay because there's so much funny stuff on there. But so that's changed the way we actually our own sort of our consumer behaviour. And obviously things like Twitter, um, again it's changed the way we interact and things like YouTube and Flickr and Instagram and these sort of um, portals have changed the way that we exchange media content. Who's watched something on BBC iPlayer? Who's watched stuff on YouTube? Exactly. So this is we don't just watch things on TV or listen to stuff off the radio. So again, technology and computing has changed the way that we entertain ourselves. So the impact on our life is, is profound and groundbreaking. Okay? So it has a massive impact on everything we do. Another question. Would you say, that, what is this anyway? All right, that's a big clue. What, but what is it? <laughs> Back to the future. No, it's um, obviously it's a microprocessor. Do you think that's mankind's greatest invention? That's a big question. Put your hand up if you think it's, uh, it's the human, humankind's greatest invention. Who thinks it's fire? Who thinks it's the wheel? 
That's the disk. Does anyone know? Can anyone tell me which decade the first kind of microprocessor was invented? Well, 1960s, that, that's, that, that'll do, that's a good decade. 1960s, so we're only talking 50-ish years for this, for this to be able, for a microprocessor to be around. But think of the impact it's had on the world since the 1960s, 1970s. It's, it's been a massive, an absolute game changer. So even if you think over the past five or ten years, like um, who's used an iPad or any other kind of tablet? Well, that seems like they are pretty good. But if you think about five to ten years ago, that technology was very, very mature, and we couldn't use that sort of stuff. So you know, this is all kind of based around this. Um, there are literally billions of microprocessors in use today. Billions upon billions of microprocessors, because, as I said earlier, they are everywhere, from your desktop PC to your mobile phone to cars to fridges um, to little thermostats and kind of embedded microprocessors that are literally everywhere. Um, our world is so dependent on this, but we don't think about it because it just works. But one of the themes that kind of was pulled out over the, over kind of a, over the day was. The fact that someone has to create this stuff. So we know that something like an iPhone is really easy to use because it doesn't come with an, in an instruction manual. You don't have to be told how to use an iPhone or an iPad, for example, because it's just obvious. So that's kind of one of the greatest successes and the greatest failures of computer science or technology is to make things really easy to use because you don't then appreciate how hard someone had to do to actually make that happen. Someone has to, has to create these things. So, you know, it's you guys. You need to, you need to be able to be creating things like that in the future. And as we said, the microprocessor is not a, a sentient living device. It can't think. You know, there are intelligent systems, there are kind of cutting edge artificial intelligence research, but we do not have cyborgs from the future coming to kill us. Okay? Human beings, it's the human brain that solves problems in the real world. Yes, it uses technology, but you need to know how to think, how to leverage and use technology to solve problems. You are the clever things that need to solve the problems of the future. Fine. So we've all had fun here today, right? Yeah. That's it. Job done. Thanks for coming. It was really, uh, really good. Yeah, I know, that's a, yeah, good point, that was a hard fight. Guys, you had fun today? Yeah! Wait. But it, it's not going to end here, and, and it definitely won't end here. 2012 is going to be a special year. Not only is it the Olympics, um, obviously that's quite special, and we'll be paying for that for many, many years, but, <coughs> the legacy, um, but 2012 is going to be a special year for computer science. Is that who's heard of Alan Turing? Yeah. Okay. So 2012 is the, is the centenary of Alan Turing's birth, so he would have been 100 years old this year. Um, and he is, obviously, some of you may know that he had massive contributions during the Second World War from a cryptography effort, from a code breaking effort. But he, his research, he was a computer scientist or a mathematician, and he invented, or kind of he, he theorized or modeled computation. So essentially, all computers are based around his theoretical model of, of computation. So we wouldn't have essentially w working computers or machines that, without this theoretical model. Um, so 2012 is a big year. There's going to be a lot of interest and buzz about why computer science or computing is really important. Technology is on kind of everyone's radar. I mean, we've seen it here today. The BBC are here. The Guardian were here earlier. Um, there's loads of people walking around with cameras interviewing people. Um, Alan, Alan showed you who was funding these sort of events. Microsoft, Google. Uh, they are pretty big players in the, in the kind of the, the tech world because it, this is a big year for technology. So, what are we going to do about it? As in, we and I mean you guys. What are we going to do about it? Your country needs you. 
And that works on a number of levels because we need you to spread the word. So you've had fun today, you've really enjoyed yourself, you've seen some really interesting things, but we need you to keep that momentum going and spread the word. So your country definitely actually does need you because the UK needs people to be interested in technology and solving problems and having the skills for the future. So I know, you know there's obviously a wide range of age groups here, but you know, in 10 years time, you guys will be working and contributing to the economy of the UK. It's a scary thought. But it's a good thing. So you need to have the skills to contribute to this digital economy, to solving problems and using technology. So your country does genuinely need it. So again, the patriotic here. But how are we going to do this? So as you can see, I've uh, been writing these slides all afternoon. Um, so they're a little bit sketchy. But I've picked a few points of where we can kind of, what we're going to take away from this uh, thing. So, what can you do? So, show your passion. Don't be afraid to, to say your interest in technology. Um, we saw the picture of, the, of the, the geek right at the start. You're not geeks. You're interested in something that's probably one of the most important things to, to the world, technology and how it affects our lives. Don't be afraid to show your interest in this stuff. Also, we know kind of technology is everywhere. Don't be afraid to kind of to, to think how it fits into your life. Okay, it's a game changer. It's really big. Creativity and innovation. So, how can we use technology? How can we, how can we use it to apply it and solve different things? So, one of the things we we were hearing today is people saying, "Well, I don't want to be a computer scientist, or I don't want to work as being a programmer." It doesn't make it, that's, that's, that's not a problem. But the skills and the interests you have and the things you're learning today, and hopefully in the future, are applicable to everything. So it makes no difference if you're going to work in business, in finance, or anything. The skills you will learn doing computing will, will be there for the rest of your life because they are, these problem solving skills are really, really valuable. And this is something that's really important, I think has kind of been lacking for a long time, is find something you enjoy doing. Play and have fun. Now, some of the things we've, we've seen with like the .NET Gadgeteer, Arduinos, the Raspberry Pi when it comes out. Gadgets, they're interesting. You know, and also, who plays computer games? That's fun, that is genuinely fun. But then, that has a really serious side because someone's had to create those games and someone's had to create those consoles. So you know, find your niche, find something that you're really interested in and don't be afraid to have fun and play with it. Because playing is really important. And finally, the final big point is we need you guys to spread the word. So wherever, wherever any of you have come from today, you need to take the message of Hacks of the Future away with you and showcase that passion, and don't be afraid to show that this is interesting. You know, we want you to run events like this all over the country. And just go into your schools and tell your friends why it's really fun, show them what you did today, and don't be afraid to be a geek like me. Thank you very much. Not a show it up for Tom Rick. Come on. <laughs> so what happens next? What? Prizes? What happens next? Can't hear them over there. What happens next? is I've come up with this really clever computer program that's going to choose people randomly within the room that's going to allocate them two things a chance to win a prize and a chance and a, and a baseball cap now this program if I could show it to you you'd be really really impressed but I just tried to make it run then and it wouldn't work so I'm going to have to use raffle tickets instead so what will happen is in a minute Somebody is going to come, they're going to hand you a strip of raffle tickets, because you're all nice, really honest, good people. 
You're going to get the strip, you're going to remove one, and you're going to pass it down so that everybody in the room... So everybody in the room gets one raffle ticket each. So we're going to do that in a moment. At the same time, some very beautiful young... Sorry, some men with beards. They're going to come out with baseball caps. And they're going to hand everybody a baseball cap. Now, you don't have to take a baseball cap if you don't want one. But they... Sorry, I didn't hear that. What? Oh. You don't have to take a baseball cap if you don't want one, but we've got one for everybody to have one each. So maybe take one home, and if you don't want it, give it to your hamster. Or your granddad. Or your cousin Vera. Now, while we get ready to do all of this, it's important that we're all sat down nice and quietly and calmly, or you don't get no raffle ticket. So we're going to send the raffle tickets out now. Now, I've chosen my three crew, Tim, Martin, and Brian. And Martin and Brian are going to take one side of the room, and they're going to go around and hand out. So they're going to take those scripts, Martin and Brian. That's Tim. And Tim, you and I are going to go this side of the room. Ben, could you take my place and go to that thank you? Yeah, hats out, please. Okay. More, more, more tickets. Oh, I forgot to mention, every adult who has one of these lanyards needs to hand in their lanyard because they can win prizes as well. So, adults, I'll get a box for your lanyards to come into. More tickets. Now, can I have a couple of responsible adults put their hands up, please? Some responsible adults. Responsible adults. We just need five responsible adults to go around and collect in all of the lanyards and put them in this box here. Thank you. Adults collecting the lanyards. You've got a ticket. You haven't got a raffle ticket yet. Right, have you got all the lanyards in the box? All the 
Spaniards. It could be, I won't say the name of the person on this one here, but I could pull one out, and it could be an adult, and the adult can come and choose a prize. Or it might be that I pull a yellow ticket out of the bag over there, and you come forward and you choose a prize. Now, this is going to get a little bit health and safety mad, so I just need to let you know, when you come up, what prize you can collect. Now, we have a lady sat at that end of the stairs, she's guarding that end of the stairs, and we have a gentleman with a Metaswitch baseball cap on, at this end of the stairs, and what will happen is when I call out a ticket number, you're going to go, oh, that's, that, that's, that's me, that's me. And what will happen is you'll show them the ticket, you'll choose a prize, and you'll go down by the same staircase. Now, you're sat there, and you can't see what the prizes are, so I'll explain what they are. So, start at this end. You might choose, when you come up, you might choose a Google pen. You might choose a National Museum of Computed T-shirt, very lovely colour, with a card on the back. You might choose a National Museum of Computing T-shirt that's been hacked by freaky clowns, all the code's been taken off it. You might choose a Colossus mug, or a National Museum of Computing mug. A memo block, you can write lots of ideas for computer designs and programs on here. You might choose one of our fabulous O'Reilly books. Oh, we've got must be about 20, 30 books. Some of these books, was it really £47.99? Gosh. And so you might choose one of those, £50 worth. If you're really lucky, watch this. You might come up and choose one of these bags, which has got a drinks bottle from Microsoft Research. Oh wow, look at this. <laughs> what else? What else? Oh, there's just all sorts of stuff in there. DVDs and everything. Oh, look! We from was it? I think this was from a, a college in Southport that sponsored. They have two Arduinos. Am I right? Was it a college in Southport? No, it wasn't. It was another college. Ray Bowen brought those for us. Thank you. Nanodes. If you don't know what these are, you find the instructions online tells you how to build. You know, Freaky Clown said he managed to use one of these to hack into a country in seven seconds. So you could use one of those instructions online. You might choose an Ubuntu CD with lots of stuff on it, or a Make magazine, or. Ooh. Google Android. Who'd like a Google Android? I haven't pulled out your ticket yet, so you can't. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, ooh. We have Google T-shirts. 
They only come in skinny, slim line. So, take one, one per ticket. These, oh, I made a friend at Bar Camp Blackpool, and he came up with an idea for a product which was a little stand, you put your hand on your phone on it, it's a desktop stand. These, you cannot buy these yet. 500 of these have been made, and these were the first two to come off the production line. So it could be a collector's item, or you might want to open it, and you might want to use it. Uh, what else we got? You plan on giving us a hooded sweatshirt, so you can put your hands in the front to keep them warm. Uh, what else have we got? More books. Right, and for people, get your tea stuff. Yeah, I'll go into that in a second, thank you very much. These are for people who don't have a lot of hair like me. Hey, don't make fun of me because I've got no hair. Be nice to me, get to build your own software. Okay, so it's a lens cleaning cloth you can use. Right, should we just get on with the draw? Are the tickets ready? Oh, look at this fabulous prize. This was donated today. Somebody went to the Microsoft.net Gadgeteer workshop and they donated this fabulous raincoat. It comes from, do you pronounce it Kesha? Kesha? And it was made in China. And so we bought it from Decathlon. Is it your coat? Oh, sorry, I thought that was one of our prizes. Somebody also donated some money that we found. So if you lost some money today, think of a number, double it, divide it by three, do a little bit of an algorithm, you can come back to me and tell me what it is and I'll give it to you. And then tell me the serial number as well. Now, here we go. So, first person to come up and collect a prize, ticket 299. Oh. And 385, 380, 266, and 375. Martin Ayrton, gonna choose a prize. Person with no name. Paul, gonna choose a prize. Miss Sarah Carswell, come on down! Hey. Sebastian Lenton, is he still here in the building? Sebastian Lenton, come and choose a prize. Some more tickets. Choose a prize, Sebastian. And some more ticket numbers. We've got, we're going to have 303, 315, 320. Come on, quick before these prizes go, 304!